And so it, this is the first information artwork that I'm going to show you here by Douglas Gayton and the Lexicon of Sustainability. And I just I want to make a couple of comments on that. Um, you know, part of uh, what we were trying to do is we were trying to figure out how to tell the story was trying to figure out you know, who we could actually capture to convey some of the personalities that create a movement. You know, what do those people look like? And um, so one of the things that Douglas thought would be fun, since Germans do it all the time, is um, we would start to make up words and smush them together, essentially. And um, so the German words that you see here on these different information artworks, as Douglas calls them, um, they're actually, um, they are real German words, but we did the compounding and the compositing, and in many cases we did that to show how ludicrous some of the scenarios were that people were actually dealing with. So um, in, in this case, <clears throat> what we were trying to convey was what does Big Apple look like in the South Tyrol? And what's rather astounding is that in the South Tyrol, uh, so a, a hectare is um, about 2.5 acres. And on one hectare, a farmer can not gross, but a farmer can net between 25,000 and 40,000 euros. And so right now the, the euro I think is at about $1.10 and sometimes it's $1.40. So you start to think about two and a half acres and being able to actually net twenty-five dollars to $40,000. And many of these farmers, they have smaller parcels because of the inheritance practices here over the years. They have the smaller parcels, but usually they've got the average apple farmers four to six, um, four to six acres here in this particular region. So they're making really good money. And they also get to put that away tax-free because there's a progressive tax policy in Italy which allows them to do so. So essentially what started to happen was the apple farmers started to become wealthier than any of the other farmers in the region. And that's part of the story, and in a sense, you know, the land grabbing is a part of the story because all of a sudden you have these very wealthy farmers who are looking at the potential of being able to grow their apple crop, actually grow their um, productive capacity, and so they start looking for places where there are no apples. And where are there no apples? There are fewer apples as you start to go up into higher elevations, but what are we dealing with these days? We're dealing with climate change and a warming climate, so all of a sudden, the places where you could not grow apples, you can grow apples. And the Finchgau Valley that I showed you there on the map, that's where, that's prime apple territory. 300 days of sunshine, ample water coming in from all of the glaciers and the snow melt from all sides. Just an incredible place to put apples. But you know, with that comes a cost, and that cost is <clears throat> that the apple growers wanted perfect cosmetic apples. So if you go and if you're traveling in Europe right now and you buy an apple, there's a one in seven chance that it came from the South Tyrol because they've become so famous for these beautiful, magnificent apples that they are so careful with in the harvest. Um, and, but part of that means that they also are using a number of different pesticides in the process in order to maintain that cosmetic beauty. And so as a result right now, it's the highest use of pesticides anywhere in Italy at about 42 kilograms per hectare. So 42 kilograms of pesticides per 2.5 acres, which is heavy. Um, and so there's quite the cost to it, while, you know, which sort of balances out that seeming wealth that's starting to come in.